Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Hillary Serpice. I am the vice president at Government Executive Media Group and publisher of Route 50. And today I am super excited to be joined by Al Hempen and Ellery Monks, the co-founders of The Atlas. So, ladies, I guess it's best to start by saying welcome to the family. Um, as someone who's been here 23 years now, it's a great family to be a part of, and I am so excited that you are joining us. Tell us more about The Atlas and you know, give us a quick introduction. So The Atlas is a free online community for local government officials and staff to do three things. The first is to browse case studies of best practices that are happening in local governments around the world. The second is to follow trending topics in local government. And the third is to post questions to one another to crowdsource ideas and advice. Um, since we launched in April 2019, we've had about 25,000, uh, just over that, 25,000 local government officials and staff have engaged on the Atlas since then. Um, we have about 3,000 of those folks engage on the Atlas each month. You both built the Atlas after years of firsthand experience in government. Um, so maybe share with us, how did your time in public sector inspire the platform? Yeah, it was core to it. So Ellery and I met um, working in D.C. In, as a part of the Obama administration. And we loved working in public sector. Didn't love the pace so much. Um, so we ended up leaving together and working as local government consultants for a number of years. And we worked with cities across the country and around the world, really focused on helping them innovate, adopt new software, new processes. And we really thought going into that work that the biggest pain points would be systemic, that it would be procurement and access to capital. So how things were bought and paid for. And to be fair, those are challenges. But the biggest barrier that we ran into was frankly a human barrier. It was the fact local government officials and staff are risk averse. And they have good reason to be risk averse, and we can talk about that. But fundamentally, what that means is that that risk aversion really plays into every decision that gets made, and it really impacts their ability to adopt new solutions. And so figuring out a way to deal with that risk aversion was something that we really wanted to tackle, um, and, and that's why we built the Atlas. And I think we can all agree, right, that these peer-to-peer -peer platforms are becoming a major way we all interact, right? Whether it's our personal lives, for work, across industries, and now with work from home mandates, I think that's even more important for us to have that peer-to-peer that -peer platform. So maybe share with us why you think it's so important and why this model works so well, specifically in the public sector. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this gets into what Elle was just talking about, which is the very, very understandable and justified risk aversion of local government officials. Um, so ultimately, local government officials and staff rely on recommendations and validation from their peers and their colleagues, just like the rest of us do. Like, I don't go to a new restaurant without checking Yelp or Google, and probably you guys don't either. Um, so when a local government official or staff person wants to go to their superior, whether that's their mayor, city council, department head, whoever it is, and they want to make an argument that they're going to try something new, they're going to do things differently, they're going to adopt a new technology, they need to be able to point to another city, another local government, where that approach has been tried and it's worked really well. They need to be able to say how much the project cost, what the outcomes were, um, who the private sector partners were who were involved, all that kind of good stuff. And what's happening right now is that that kind of peer-to-peer -peer or colleague-to-colleague -colleague learning is absolutely happening in local government. That's how they make all of their decision-making. But what's happening is that it's happening in a really ad hoc and unscalable way. So it's happening right now, like buried in sprawling local government-only email threads that are impossible to search like after the fact, and they're impossible to unsubscribe from. It's, really, it's horribly unmanageable. Um, and really, at the end of the day, like the market efficient inefficiencies that result from this dynamic are horrific. Sales cycles in government and in local government in particular are not so notoriously wrong for like they're so notoriously long for a reason. Um, and it's because of these market inefficiencies. So for us, building a platform for local government learning and sharing 
really has the potential to unlock the local government market writ large and create really meaningful progress on the issues that we care the most about. And that's why we're in it at the end of the day. Like Elle was just talking about our background in public sector and in, in government. We're in it to actually make a difference. That's why we're here. And we think that the, the way to do it is by making peer-to-peer -peer learning more efficient and more scalable. And I Absolutely. also know um, from our process trying to woo you guys that you've had quite a bit of buzz since the beginning and you had quite a few suitors too. We weren't the only people who saw the value of what you were creating. So can you maybe just share a bit of why you chose Government Executive Media Group and Route 50? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, when you're trying to make a market that is 20% of GDP more efficient, obviously there's a lot of interest. And we had always kind of planned to go the traditional tech startup VC backed route. Um, and we participated in 500 Startups, which is one of the premier tech accelerators in Silicon Valley, and got a lot of great exposure to that market. Um, but frankly, the conversation and the relationship with Government Exec Media Group has really felt fateful from the beginning. Um, when Tim first reached out to us over the summer, Ellery and I had actually been doing some soul searching and said, do we really feel like the traditional VC route is the right route for us? Is it the right route for our market? Is it the right color of money to really execute on our vision and our mission? And the conversations with Tim were just so aligned. It was so clear that Government Executive Media Group and Route 50 had the same mission, just like you talked about, Hillary, at, at the top of this conversation. And it was so clear that together, grow more quickly, and change the market more quickly and deepen our market insights more quickly in a way that traditional VC money just wouldn't enable us to do. Um, and so for us, this was such an important and huge opportunity to get done what we wanted to get done in partnership with, frankly, an organization and a brand that we were avid readers of and avid followers of. And so for us, it's just such a awesome place to start and continue to grow and build on the momentum that we already have. So you talk about reach to government leaders, deep market insights. These are all the things that the contractor community are hungry for. So is that what you all deliver now to your customers and also maybe share how that might evolve over time? Yeah. So that's our value proposition. Um, right now, our company partners have access to a new digital marketing channel. It's trusted, as Ellery said, by over 25,000 local government officials, more and more every day. Um, and we work with them to really focus on publishing case studies that highlight how their company is working with local government to solve challenges. Um, we also provide market intelligence reports, things like trending keywords, top case studies. And we've built out the opportunity for local government officials and staff to engage directly and build relationships with company partners. Um, and that's through participation in things like virtual events and some of the social networking features. The area that we're really expanding into um, and we'll be doing more so with the support of Government Executive and Route 50 is that buyer intent data and market intelligence reporting. Um, together, we'll be able to integrate all sorts of new data streams and refine our algorithm to deliver market intelligence at a scale and depth that frankly doesn't exist in the government market today. So, Al, this one's for you. Um, can you share with us any examples in the last several months where the Atlas is empowering cities to do more with less and deliver on their mission? Yeah, I mean, we have tons of examples. One of my favorite is actually uh, the city of Tijuana. So they were looking to um, really redevelop their downtown corridor to expand kind of economic development in that area. And they came to the Atlas to read a case study about how our city, their neighbor, San Diego, deployed sensors on their streetlights to really understand how people were moving through their, their downtown to help you know, drive data-driven decision-making. And came to the Atlas really focused on sensors um, and discovered through the case study database that there were all sorts of other tools that they could use, software tools, data tools, to achieve the same end, but potentially do it more quickly and at lower cost. And so when they went to write the scope of work for the procurement, they ended up writing a much broader scope 
um, which enabled them to not just go and buy sensors that they could put on their streetlights, but also consider a whole range of options. Um, and so for the city of Tijuana, it allowed them to, one, have a more competitive process and two, actually get to the end result quicker and in a more cost efficient way um, to actually make the decisions they needed to make to drive the down drive their downtown and drive their city forward. So a great example of how cities are using this to really change their process and make their process more inclusive and more cost efficient and ultimately deliver on the value um, that they promised to, to their citizens and, and us as residents. Well, we're really excited. Um, I'm so excited we were able to sit down and capture this conversation. Uh, I think anyone tuning in can see why we're all thrilled by this partnership and see the growth and the excitement it's just going to bring to the state and local market. So let's shift now to the state and local landscape going into 2021. It's going to be such a critical time for our government leaders. I think we all know and agree about that. But what are some of the solutions and topics you're finding to be the most top of mind based on the insights you already have? Yeah, absolutely. So local government leaders are definitely still preoccupied with COVID and COVID-related fallout, um, especially budget ramifications. I think that's been written about and talked about widely in terms of uh, impacts to local government budgets. Um, and this is showing up all over our search trends and it's trickling. It's kind of trickling across all of the data points that we collect. So things that um, or topics that are being really heavily searched right now by local government leaders include uh, pretty predictable topics like crisis communications um, and citizen engagement, but then less obvious topics that are also still related to this trend, like automation, online permitting, online payment, all of that kind of good stuff. And these are really, um, if you take a step back, these are really technologies and approaches uh, that a lot of local governments have been kind of thrown into overnight since COVID hit. Um, it's also worth pointing out that searches related to federal stimulus um, and federal funding have really increased since the election. Um, and I, I think the way we interpret that data is that local government leaders are really craving clarity from the federal government about what kind of support, if any, um, they can be expecting in the near term. Are there any trends that you're seeing around procurement as searching for solutions slowed or accelerated? And I think you touched a bit about this, but what about transitions around elections? Has that changed what you're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. So we saw a huge uptick um, in search, not just searching, but also adoption of software and technology um, in the early days of COVID. So like March through maybe May or June, um, where I was just saying local governments were basically forced to adapt to new realities, just like every other sector um, of teleworking and, and all of that kind of all that kind of stuff, basically overnight. Um, in that kind of in those first months, what we saw is that a lot of local governments were able to get basically emergency approval um, for the adoption of new software and technology that uh, enabled that transition. Um, and that's where we saw like enormous searching around things like uh, virtual town hall meetings, for instance, um, and, and uh, again, like online permitting and online payment were hugely searched um, in the early days of COVID. Um, what we've seen as kind of the initial adaptation has, uh, I think, has kind of not ended, but that local governments have come to grips with the initial effects of teleworking and of COVID-19, what we're seeing is that um, there's been a really big increase in searching related to software and technologies that enable monetary or time savings. Um, and again, I think this is reflective of really serious budget concerns on the part of local governments. Um, and that's continued, that trend has continued to hold through spring, through fall, and now I think we're, we're continuing to see it into the winter. Um, it's worth pointing out, and this is a fun, this is a fun connection point with Route 50. It's worth pointing out that this trend that I just that I just mentioned um, about technology and software that that promises efficiencies or savings um, was held up by a survey that we did with Route 50 um, in partnership with ELGL and Civic Plus. 
Um, so I think when we did that survey, it was about 400 local government officials and staff that responded, and 80% of them responded that software and technology that promises savings, um, whether that's monetary or time, has become more attractive um, since the start of COVID-19. What can local government members expect in the next six months? And what can private sector partners expect in the next six months? Sure. I'll start with our local government members. This is the stuff uh, that we love talking about the most. So I think the most exciting thing that's going to be coming down the line in the next six months is that we're working on a brand new version of the Atlas in partnership with Route 50. Um, And we expect that we'll release that later this spring. Um, And the goal of this brand new version of the Atlas that we're doing in partnership with Route 50 is that we're really going to be creating a one-stop shop for local government learning. Um, So this means, for example, that local government leaders are going to be able to follow trending topics like COVID-19 and receive relevant news articles from Route 50, case studies from the Atlas, discussions and virtual events across both platforms, and get all of that delivered to their email inboxes in a really, really um, customizable, really, really empowering way. Um, and we're super excited about that. The new version That's is also amazing. Be- <laughs> it is. It's, re- it's honestly, it's like, all of like us. I said, yeah, like I said, this is the work that just, you know, it just like lights us up. It's, it's awesome. It's why we're, it's why we're here. It's amazing. Um, but the new version is going to create a bigger, more active network of local government leaders that are really eager to crowdsource ideas and advice, um, and really who are signing up to help their colleagues in other cities pursue innovation, um, which is super exciting. And it's also going to create a bigger platform for those local government leaders to share their success stories and their, and their career achievements too. Um, And then the last thing to note is that this new version that we're pursuing in partnership with Route 50 will also create more access to new formats of virtual events. So we, um, for instance, we host virtual office hours with special guests. They're kind of like um, Ask Me Anything sessions on Reddit. Um, And they provide a more casual, kind of like a more casual venue for local government leaders to interact with experts but to do it in a way that doesn't require um, spending an hour and a half on a webcam. There's no, there's no video component, which can be a really, can be a really compelling thing for some folks. For our company partners, um, the next six months are, as Ellery said, really going to be focused on growth and that results in all sorts of value for them as well. So first and foremost, we're going to be focused on scaling our reach um, with local government officials and staff. Obviously route 50 has a, loyal subscriber base of over 100,000 folks. And so we're going to be working to collaborate and and not only um, engage with that audience, but but build it together. Um, The second is to be really focused, as I said, on deepening our market intelligence. So in collaboration with government executive media groups, researchers, and analysts, we're going to be working to combine data streams, refining our algorithm, and start unlocking, again, new business insights that don't exist at a scale and depth yet, um, like we'll be able to reach together. And the last piece is we'll be really focused on growing our capacity internally, which will enable us to roll out new product features and new partnerships more quickly. Um, We're going to be growing the team to about 20 in the next year. Um, So lots more to come, lots of exciting stuff. And we're really excited to be transforming the market um, together with y'all. I can't wait to work more closely with the two of you going forward. Um, To everyone who tuned in, thank you for joining us. I would just say in closing, be sure to check out both Route 50 and the Atlas. Um, So until next time, thanks so much.